walking and chewing gum, dancing and listening to music, you know, just a couple of things that you could do at the same time. What about buying and selling real estate? All right, this one is not as straightforward as the first two, but it's not as complicated either. Hey, if we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Stephen Vargas from the Vargas team and I bring you real estate videos every single week, such as how to's, property tours and interviews and much, much more. So consider subscribing if that is something that you're interested in. With all the appreciation taking place in certain parts of the country, many sellers want to cash out and use the proceeds from the sale of their home to purchase a new property. And if you've ever been involved with a real estate transaction, then you know that timelines are extremely important and can have serious monetary consequences if not followed correctly. In the instance of buying and selling a property simultaneously, we're essentially dealing with two sets of timelines. That's four, two sets of timelines. One for the sale and one for the purchase. Does this add another layer of complexity? Well, yes, it does. But if a real estate agent that you're working with knows what they're doing, then they can ensure a smooth transition and save you a lot of time. Now, before we dive in, I did want to preface that I'm making a few assumptions here. The first is that you have met and spoken with an agent that is going to list your home for sale and also help you locate the one that you're going to purchase. Ideally, someone who understands the market. And yes, I do believe that you should use the same agent to help you with both if possible. Secondly, is that you've been pre-approved by a lender for the purchase of your new home. None of what I'm going to talk about is possible without knowing if you even qualify for the purchase to begin with. So you want to get these two things squared away. Okay, so what are the steps to accomplishing this whole sell and buy matter? Well, the easiest way would be to get a contract in writing for the sale of your home with the added verbiage imposed by you, the seller, to the buyer that the sale of your home is contingent upon finding a new home to purchase. Likewise, you then want to add a similar contingency on the contract for the home that you're about to purchase, adding that the purchase of your new home is contingent upon the sale of your current one. Look, it all sounds really confusing, but all that really means is that you can't sell your current home until you find a new home and you can't buy that new home until you sell your current home. It's important to add that you would ideally want the current sale of your home to be under contract first before you send any offers out to the ones that you want to purchase. These contingencies give you a way out. Take scenario one, for example. Let's say you have your current home under contract and you did everything possible to find a new home, but in the end, you were unable to. Either you didn't like the homes that were on the market or you got outbid on other properties you sent offers to. Whatever the reason, the point is that you were unable to find a new home. If you didn't have this contingency, then you would essentially be obligated to sell that home. I've seen this happen before where sellers are forced to sell their home, which they no longer want to sell because they were unable to secure a new property. And vice versa, the same applies to you as a buyer. If you're under contract to buy and you are counting on the proceeds from the sale of your current home to apply to your new purchase, but then the buyer of the sale of your current home pulls out of the deal, well, now you're obligated to purchase that new property or you will lose your escrow deposit. Either scenario is not ideal and puts you in a bind. Contingent offers, as they're often referred to, make it so that in the event that these scenarios take place, you would be covered. However, depending on your market, contingent offers may be difficult to get accepted both by the sale and purchase agreements. If you're in a seller's market, then it would be easier to impose a contingent offer on a buyer. And if you're in a buyer's market, then it'd be easier to impose it on a seller. But rarely is it easy to impose it on both parties. So if that doesn't work, then here's what I believe you should do. Absolutely nothing. You should just give up and stay with your home. Okay, no, just kidding. You don't want to do that. What you want to do instead is to enter into a post-occupancy agreement with the buyer for the sale of your property. As I mentioned earlier in this video, each real estate transaction has a timeline. And part of that timeline is what's called a financing commitment. This is gold to you as a seller, because what this means is that the buyer's lender has agreed and committed to providing the loan for the purchase of your property. So what you as a seller want to do is to wait until this point before you start sending out any offers on your end to purchase your new property. The reason why is that when the buyer's lender for your home that you're selling has committed, this pretty much guarantees the sale of your home. And the commitment letter is usually received between one to three weeks prior to your closing. So you have some advance notice of this. This is where the post occupancy agreement comes into place. Keep in mind that this was done way at the beginning of the negotiations before you even sign the contract. So this is already baked into your contract. What this post occupancy agreement does is that it allows you to stay in the property for a short time after the sale has taken place. Usually post occupancy agreements will allow you as a seller to occupy the property for another 30 to 60 days after the closing. So now you can live in the home you just sold, giving you enough time to close on your new property all while having the cash on hand, because again, remember you sold your home already. And since you've waited until the commitment letter before you send out any offers, this makes it ideal because you didn't waste any time and you're not scrambling looking for properties during your post occupancy period. Instead, you're already under contract and you're simply waiting to go through the steps before closing on your new property. Selling and buying real estate simultaneously is quite simple. It all comes down to timing. If you have the right timelines in place and know how to act and when to act, you'll be in a good position to ensure a successful transition. The biggest takeaway here is to work with a real estate agent that knows this process. And guys, consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly real estate content just like this video and help the channel out, will you, by just tapping that like button if you found value from the video. And don't forget to share this video to help spread the message. And as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time.